Marami po tayong wala ngayon. Wala, uh, wala si Brother Ryan at kanyang pamilya dahil uh, yung parents o yung tatay ni Ryan ay may sakit. So kailangan niya bumaba sa nagupan at uh, kailangan niya asikasuhin at uh, bantayan yung kanyang mga magulang. Dahil yung kanyang kapatid nag-start ng nag-work sa Ilocos. So, wala talagang magbabantay sa kanyang uh, And yung mga iba natin mga kapatiran ay uh, naitindihan din natin na wala sila ngayon uh, dahil nga sa ating sitwasyon. Patuloy din natin pag-pray si Brother Douglas uh, Kalasikas. Uh, nagkaroon kami ng chatting kagabi and uh, sabi niya uh, okay na siya ngayon. Medyo uh, wala na yung fever, wala na yung... Uh, pero yung ubo tuloy pa rin at yung pangati ng nalabunan. So, Let's continue to pray for our uh, Douglas Kalasikas. Na family pa kayo sa kanya. Once in a while, dumadalo siya dito sa ating church. So, uh, nagkaroon po siya ng uh, COVID-19. So, uh, positive po siya. Naka-isolate siya ngayon sa teacher's camp. Tama pa, positive po? Yes. So, ipag-pray natin. Positive. So, ihanda natin ang ating mga sarili. And uh, we have visitors, by the way. So, uh, Yes, uh, Scott, Ate Amelie, and Daniel, you are all welcome here to our church, Redeemer's Christian Church. Thank you for your presence with us. And uh, tunay ng Diyos ay mabuti sa atin. Ihanda po natin ang ating mga sarili sa paglapit sa ating buhay ng Diyos. So, uh, alam natin ang Diyos natin, kagaya na aking laging sinasabi na Bagamat ang Diyos na ito siya Diyos na banal, He so holy above, He is so high, He is so uh, righteous God in heaven. And yet, because of His mercy and love, He condescends with us. And uh, the proof of that is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So from transcendent, that God is so above, and yet He is so near to us, He is so... Uh, kumbaga, imanet with us dahil nga sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. At dahil sa Kanya, mayroon tayong access sa Diyos na tayo makakalapit ngayon sa Kanya with confidence. But, I will read to you the book of Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 in preparation for our worship. Uh, verse 1, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. So praise God for His word and this passage uh, fit uh, into the overall argument of pollutions in the sense that we are united with Christ and Jesus is our supreme ruler. He is uh, the victorious Christ. Na siya ang naging substitute. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and because of what He has done on the cross, na siya ay namatay para sa ating makasalanan And dito sa Book of Colossians, laging sinasabi ni Paul na si Kristo is sufficient sa atin. Hindi na natin kailangan ng mga additions, ng mga add-on for us to complete our Christianity. Christ is complete with us dahil sa kanyang ginawa sa Cruz ng Calvario. Ngunit as believers, as Christians, ito ngayon ang panawagan, command. Ito yung imperative. Ito ngayon ang application sa buhay natin as believers. Ang ating Panginoon, He is now seated uh, at the right hand of God sa trono ng Diyos. Uh, in other words, pinapakita na si Kristo is victorious. And we are now part of the first resurrection. We are raised with Him uh, in Christ. In other words, dahil sa ginawa niya sa Cruz, sa Calvario, meron na tayong katiyakan na makalapit sa Diyos. And ang panawagan ngayon na ituon natin ang ating isip sa ating Panginoong Isus na nasa itaas 
At yan ang application sa buhay bilang mananampalataya. And therefore, as believers, ay tinatanggal natin anumang mga balakit, anumang mga hinanakit, bitterness, anumang mga remaining depravity in us, and we look to the Lord Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of His Father in heaven. And we are raised with Him. We are now forgiven, cleansed, justified. This is our status before God. And dahil sa ginawa ng ating Painim So Christo, we can come to Him with confidence to the throne of grace. At yan po ang gagawin natin. Tayo ay mag-awitan, tayo ay uh, magpupuri sa Diyos at maging sa pakikinig ng Kanyang salita. And sa ating pong panimula, ating pong hilingin si Kuya Noel na siya pong mangunguna sa atin sa panalangin. Ngayon, pinupuli ka po namin at sinasamba. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify your name, Lord. We acknowledge you, Lord. Ikaw ang Diyos na nasa langit, Panginoon. Ang Diyos na laging nakatingin po sa amin, Panginoon. Ang Diyos na hindi nakakalimot sa kanyang mga anak. Pupulihin po ang ito. Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat po sa umaga ito. Sa bilhin po kami na paribago umaga at ibagong pag-asa ng aming buhay po. Salamat po. At tunay nga po, maliwalhati ang aming pangalan sa aming kalagisa. At bago ang lahat pa minoon, kami po ay nagpapasiyasat minoon sa aming mga isipan at puso o Lord. Ano po, Panginoon, ang kamundungis sa aming puso o Lord. Tumi sa aming mga sa aming face, Lord. Kami po ay nagpapalini sa mga ipo kami ng kapatawaran ang mga kasalanan. Sinasadya man po ito o hindi sinasadya o Lord. Patawarin mo po po ito. Salamat po kami noon for your forgiveness. Salamat po at baby for salvation na uh, yung natanggap po ito. Tunay nga po Panginoon na uh, maluwalhati po ito ang iyong pangalan po ito. At kalapat dapat kalamang po itaas at yung itaas na po ang mga Lord. Salamat po Truly, O Lord, you are the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Puli yung pangyong pangyong. At muli, Panginoon, sa aming pag-uupi sa Lord. At now ay salita ang lamang po, Panginoon, at sa marinig po namin. Kaya may din mo po, Panginoon, na pasto, Panginoon, na magiging Mount Peace po, 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 Panginoon. Yan po, Panginoon, na may handa po namin na aming sarili, Panginoon, upang puliging ka at sa'ng tayo, sa Spirito at sa Ato.
to, to everyone, my brothers and sisters in the door. So we now come to the uh, uh, preaching of the Word of God, and let us come before God in uh, prayer, in support of our uh, reverence before our Lord God and Christ. Our Father in Heaven, we would like to uh, offer our lives as a pleasing sacrifice before your throne. We do this not because of our own righteousness, but because of the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. For indeed, He has done it all for us. And so, Lord, may you receive our worship and our giving of honor unto your throne. And we seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we continue with our study on the Gospel of Luke. I pray, Lord God, for your illuminating power. I pray, Lord God, for your uh, enablement, for your servant. That he may decrease as you increase. All the more you will be seen as we now ponder upon your truth. So this is, you know, we thank you and we bless you Give you all of the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So uh, last time we were uh, discussing about the uh, Passover, how important the Passover is to a Jew or to the Israelites as a nation, but likewise because we were studying the Passover in the context of the table fellowship that Christ instituted okay, during the Last Supper, we now see a a new meaning to the Passover. And precisely we saw that there was no uh, meat prepared, but only the, uh, the drink offering and likewise the bread. But they are to partake precisely because the Lord Jesus Christ is the Passover lamb. And so as we now continue, we would uh, try to see a, a, an incident. I was supposed to go directly to the cross, but uh, it is quite difficult to go to the cross without even passing through this passage. Why? Because this passage is pivotal. Okay? The, the, uh, the whole uh, battle did not ensue just on the cross, but rather in this particular incident. Okay? So I'd like us to open our Bibles to Luke 22. Verses 39 to 46. Luke 22, 39 to 46. So I'll be reading from the uh, New International Version. It says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about the stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he arose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Now Jerusalem is situated 2,500 uh, 2, feet above sea level. So we here in Baguio could actually relate. Why? Because... Jerusalem is situated in a, an elevated level, just like Baguio, meaning to say that it can be hot during the day, but it could be so cold during the night. So I have experience being in the desert because I work in the Middle East, and I saw that uh, the Middle East is precisely a, an arid uh, land, and at the same time, uh, the weather is so hot during the day. But during the night, you would really find yourself having to clothe yourselves with some robe or some sweater or jacket for you to feel warm because the desert is 
quite cold that night. And this is the uh, setting by which the Lord Jesus Christ took his disciples into this particular place in the Mount of Olives. It was his routinary way of doing things. He was actually uh, going to this place in order to pray. Okay? And this place was called Gethsemane. And this prayer night would be different from the usual prayer time the Lord Jesus has with his Father. Jesus fully knew this was the hour. Jesus fully knew this was the hour. Gethsemane simply means oil press. In the Middle East, their, uh, their agriculture is more plainly uh, plants or uh, produce that comes from a desert land. Okay? And plants such as olives do grow in such a place. The rest are cactus and palm trees. And so we see that Gethsemane most likely, most likely is a, an agricultural land where they plant this olive, okay? this vineyard. And across the brook from Jerusalem, at the foot of Mount Olives was Jesus' prayer closet. That is why it was easy for Judas to pinpoint his location. He knew Jesus would be praying at this time. At the table fellowship hours before, we see Judas with the 11 disciples breaking bread with the master. So probably Judas may have slipped out in between the time of the table fellowship and during this time. Because I believe when Jesus went to the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was just with the eleven. Judas was already gone. After initiating the Passover meal, but the hand of him who is going to betray me is with me on this table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. This made the disciples with Jesus question among themselves, who would do such a horrible thing? Who would try to betray him? The twelve were, uh, the twelve were with Jesus for three long years, and who would do such an act. And even the disciples ask, Lord, is it I? And even Judas, in Matthew 26, 25, even ask, Lord, is it I? As though Jesus could not read Judas as mine, and yet the Lord answered, Yes, you have said it. He was the son of perdition in John 17, verse 12. I think we need to ponder a bit on this particular incident. Judas was with Jesus and the other disciples. He was actually the treasurer. <clears throat> he was handling the money. What a waste. What a waste. It's a year's wage. It could have been given to the poor. Diba? Napakaganda ng kanyang proposition. Huh? And many of us may even think, even in us here in the ministry, that we may be wasting so much time and effort, while in fact, we may say, oh, we could have helped those people, we could have done that, we could have done this. And here we see Judas trying to be 
be a good person, one who was looking at the welfare of so many people and yet the Lord knew his mind. The Judas was selfish. I remember Pastor Jay teaching us regarding Bill, Billy Graham and his friend Clark Charles Templeton, who is known as Chuck. And during their time, they were evangelizing in the 1940s, specifically in 1945. And then 11 years later, Chuck, or Charles Templeton, decided to, to leave the ministry. And for what reason? He had a lot of reasons. And he had this uh, book entitled The Reason for Leaving God, or Leaving Christianity. He had a lot of questions regarding creation, regarding Adam and Eve. He had, he had, he had a question regarding the virgin birth and the resurrection. He had doubts in many areas. Why people who are good die and why so many bad people just continue on to live and live their life to the fullest. And these questions lingered in the mind of Charles Templeton to the point that he, that he said, it is useless to continue. Isn't it the same as Judas? That it is no longer valid to continue while we see so many of these sufferings, especially today that we are in a pandemic. A lot of people are so uh, <clears throat> fearful of the future, what to expect, and many even during this time have committed suicide. You know the finance minister of one uh, city in uh, Germany decided during the first month of the uh, pandemic, decided to take his life precisely because he, he, he could no longer endure the suffering of, of the people around him. That many lost their jobs, people have no food to eat, people can no longer work, children can no longer go to school. And it might be lingering in our minds as well, to some of you, that you may be doubting now the Lord Jesus Christ, His Word. And let me tell you, and let me beg you, not to even try to entertain such thoughts. Because when doubt indeed enters our mind and settles in in our hearts, the problem starts. We now try to look at the world. We now try to look at other venues or avenues where it, there must be some other way by which we can actually get out of this situation. While in fact, there is none. Our only hope is no other than our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what I would like us to understand this morning. Let us go back prior to Jesus' praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. After the table fellowship, there was a commotion between the disciples of who was the greatest among them. I thought we can only see such claims in the field of sports, like in boxing, Muhammad Ali saying, I am the greatest, and even in basketball, LeBron James is saying he is the true goat the greatest of all times, and not Michael Jordan. 
I thought we could only see such such infightings within this sphere. But I guess we can also we can also see it in our ministry. Why? Because it it likewise happened with the disciples. At the time when Jesus has explained to them the Passover, these disciples were quarreling among <coughs> themselves who is the greatest. We know the story of James and John and uh, they were seeking who would be sitting on the left and right side of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is so ironic that these disciples were with the Lord Jesus Christ already for three long years. And for Charles Templeton to even stop after 11 long years of doing ministry. So I believe it is not about the span of time that you spend in ministry, but rather how we persevere. How we persevere through the times when <clears throat> things don't go our way. In the ministry today, a lot of pastors are competing with fellow pastors trying to reach the coveted prize of becoming the celebrity pastor. Kilala niyo siguro yung Elevation Church ni Stephen Furtick. How he preaches, he preaches himself, not Christ. He does not exegete the passage, but he eisegetes the passage, thinking that he is now in the passage. And a lot of people, especially young ones, are so hooked on him. And he's one of the big church in America. If I can, if we can, if we still consider it a church, but I say it is no longer a church. It is just a gathering. Let us open our Bibles to Philippians 2, verse 5 to 11. And as we are going there, I'd like us to meditate on these words. Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Who being, the, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. <clears throat> this is how we ought to, to see things the way Jesus sees things. Let's go back to Luke chapter 22. Let us read verses 25 to 30. And this is Jesus' response to the disciples when they were quarreling among themselves who is the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. 
Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? In a question mark. Is it, is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. Who are, you are those who, are, who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you a kingdom. Just as my father conferred one on me. So that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on my thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So what do we see here, my dear brother? This is the way to go down. For you to be exalted. That is why in 1 Peter 5.15, God gives grace to the humble but opposes the proud. And here we see the Lord Jesus Christ exemplifying what it is to serve. He stooped down and washed the disciples' feet while these disciples were quarreling who among them is the greatest. So ironic. So here we find Jesus talking now with Peter, the leader of the pack, in verses 31 to 34, let us read. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that, you, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And what was... Peter's response. Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and even to death. And Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times that you know me. Jesus knew who Peter was. And he knew, just as Jesus knew Judas is going to betray him, he knew Peter was going to deny him. And so the sequence of events were moving at a very rapid pace. Jesus knew his hour has come. His word during this prayer night was the cup, the cup, the cup is the weight of the sin of the world upon his back, and the fear he is wrath of God that he is going to receive. This was the cup that Christ was referring to. He instituted the Lord's Supper, which was to be his last, till the day when he returns in his kingdom, and he prophesied his imminent betrayal by Judas, who was one of the twelve. Then Peter would deny him, not once, but thrice. And later on, they would be scattered, scared of their lives, and only one disciple would be seen at the foot of the cross, the apostle John. And Israel as a nation would hope for a criminal named Barabbas to be released instead of an innocent man in the person of Jesus Christ. And what about this innocent man? What are we to do with him? In one accord they shouted, crucify him. Crucify him. When we are so full of ourselves, we are now unable to think clearly. And this is how the Israelites saw the unfolding events. 
they would rather allow one who is a criminal to be released rather for an innocent man to be released. And to make matters worse, it's as though the disciples just came to dine at a restaurant thinking all's well and focused on debating among themselves who is the greatest. What could have been in the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ thinking that his death is already impending? And here, his disciples were quarreling among themselves. And yet we see how Peter answered the Lord Jesus Christ. So led by Peter, all the disciples strongly concluded they were dependable. Lord, maasahan mo kami. Nasa likod mo lang kami. Lord, whatever you do, Lord, we're just here. And no one can touch you. Over our dead bodies. Peter was adamant, over my dead body, Lord. And so, the other disciples likewise said the same. When Peter said, if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. Mark 14, 31. Everyone was so ready to die with the Lord Jesus Christ, even to defend him at all costs. And yet they failed. That we will see in the succeeding paragraphs. Here in the Garden of Gethsemane was the true test. The battle is at its fiercest. Jesus warns the three disciples, Peter, James, and his brother John, pray that you will not fall into temptation. And he withdrew about a stone's throw away, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Luke 22, verse 42. Jesus prayed. Prayer dominated Christ's ministry and Christ's life while he was here on earth. In choosing the twelve, he prayed. When he was with the multitude to feed the 5,000, he prayed for provisions. When the disciples on the boat met a tumultuous storm, they woke up Jesus and Jesus prayed. And when he healed, he prayed. And here, at his greatest need at Gethsemane, he prayed to his Father. Earnestly, agonizingly, not only once, but he asked God, his Father, to take this cup away from him. But let not my will, but yours be done. But three times he pleaded with the Father. Is there any other way? But the Father answered, there is no other way. There is no other way but the cross. My dear brethren, the agony didn't start at Calvary, but in Gethsemane. Can I repeat that? The agony of our Lord Jesus Christ didn't start in Calvary, but in Gethsemane. When he wrestled in prayer, it was so pivotal. The future of the human race is hinged at this hour. It was a make or break situation. If the Lord Jesus Christ would fail, then all of us fail. And the world along with it, the whole of creation. Verse 44, it says, And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. And Luke records the unique event in the life of Jesus. Luke being a doctor used for 
must have seen cases of such blood from a person's head mixed with his perspiration being a result of extreme anguish, of strain, or sensitivity. <clears throat> and we have a medical term for that today. It's called hematidrosis. Hematidrosis. It is a condition in which capillary blood vessels that feed the sweat glands rupture. Pumuputok po yung, yung glands na ito. Okay, nung, yung vessels na to, na passage po nung sweat glands no ating pawis, pumuputok na grand rapture, causing them to exude blood, occurring under conditions of extreme physical or emotional stress. And this is a very unique disease. Not all, okay? But only some people, and I saw one, a child, who has this uh, perspiration, and you would see that the color of the perspiration, red. I mean to say, it's a combination of the sweat and blood from this capillary. At Gethsemane, Jesus displayed his humanity at its very core. Jesus prayed agonizingly, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. The battle of all time and eternity was fought in Gethsemane, in prayer. When everyone else failed, such as Peter, James, and John, who fell asleep when the Lord called their attention to watch and pray, I thought they were dependable. I would be like the apostles, who are so eager to serve the Lord, and yet, during the time when we are needed most, We have a lot of reasons to make. It is true that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew 26, 41. But not so with Jesus. Not so with Jesus, our Messiah. He triumphed over all temptations and evil attacks. From the time he became a human being, Jesus was so victorious. And down through the ages we see people fail. From Adam, from Noah, from Abraham, from Moses, from David and Solomon, and those that came before and even after the Lord Jesus Christ. All fail. But Jesus, our Messiah, was victorious. He was never a failure. He indeed obeyed God's will. And God's will was for him to go to the cross. There was no other way except to go to the cross. In conclusion, I'd like us to go to 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 45 to 58. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. 
The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so we shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must be clothed, it must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe this? Do you believe the very words that we have spoken this morning? Jesus is the true Messiah. Though the Jews may still be waiting for their Messiah, our Messiah has already arrived 2,000 years ago and is soon to return to take us to himself. This is what the passage talks about. Though we may be suffering at this time with lots of diseases and pain and sufferings, and what have you? Let us continue to hang on, to cling on to these promises of our Lord because He is really going to return. And when He returns, He is going to establish His kingdom. And in His kingdom, there will be no end. Do not try to doubt or find yourselves looking for another way out. There is no other way out. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the finisher and perfecter of our faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word this morning. I hope and pray that this has really indeed pricked our hearts down to the very core and May we continue to, to meditate and ponder upon this truth. And if by chance there are some among us here who may be doubting, who may be struggling from sin, or probably having a hard time tr trying to, to see things the way you see things, Father God. Do you just minister your word to them and say that you are in control? That in this world we will have salvation. But we need to take heart because you have overcome the world for us. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for your grace and your mercy for each and every one of us. And I hope and I pray that none of us will be left behind. But rather all of us will find ourselves receive now the praise and the honor and the glory in Christ's name we pray.
topic where our song was to do page 11. The first song here is to do page
Kirby Christian book, but I don't sign this. I am signing this out of the book. Salamat po sa blessing na ito na binigay niyo sa amin na magpagbigay sa araw na ito para po sa gawain na ninyo simbahan. Bless niyo po ito po ito para magamit po ng tanga kayo sa inyo. Salamat po Ama sa araw na ito at mga araw na ito na itinagkaroon sa araw na Jesus. Amen. Magpumula po tayo. Pastor Mike sa uh, napaka-timely na message para sa ating lahat at sa ating mga kapatinig sa Facebook. Tunay nga na ang uh, Siyos sa kanyang wisdom o karunungan ay kanyang sinugo at kanyang anak para tayo ay abutin. Dahil hindi natin kayang iligtas ang ating mga sarili at ang paraan upang ang isang makasalanan ay manumbalik ang kanyang relasyon sa Diyos ay sa pumagitan ng sakripisyo ng kanyang anak na si Jesus. Nabangit ni Pastor Mike kanina yung si Charles Templeton eh, bago siya namatay noong 2001 eh, sumulat siya ng libro Farewell to God My Reasons for Rejecting the Christian Faith. Eh, nakakalungkot na nagsimula ng Maayos, ngunit ang ending ng kanyang buhay ay masaklap. At alam nyo, one of the corroborating uh, evidences of assurance of salvation is our good works as the fruit of the gospel. In fact, your perseverance proves that you have been born again. So kung tayo yung nagpapatuloy sa ating pananampalataya, ay patunay na ikaw nga ay anak ng Diyos. Ikaw ay binago ng Diyos. At ang magandang paalala sa atin, patuloy na pag-examine ng ating buhay bilang mga anak ng Diyos. At sa mga kaibigan namin sa Facebook na nanunood ngayon, maaaring hindi pa kayo mananampalataya at kinakausap ko kayo directly na kayo ay lumapit sa ating Panginoong Isus. Kayo sumampalataya na si Kristo lang ang makapagliligtas sa inyo at na ang mensahe ng Panginoon ngayon sa umaga, it might linger into your conscience that you would come to Christ by putting your trust in Him alone. Dahil si Kristo lamang ang makapagliligtas sa inyo. Sa ating mga, 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 mga tagasunod ng ating ng Panginoong Isus, ito ang katiyakan, mayroon tayo dahil minsan pa si Isus namatay sa krus at muling na buhay. Uh, Nag-iusap ako lately kay Pastor Mike na uh, in the meantime siya muna magpipreach dahil sa napakaraming mga assignments and uh, sa biyaya ng Diyos uh, in three weeks matatapos na yung ating online uh, classes. At uh, meron kaming ginagawang article or essays ngayon for uh, isa roon ay yung assurance of salvation. And God willing, may isi-share ko sa inyo itong essay na ito and uh, very uh, uh, mag-aangkop doon sa message ni Pastor Mike kanina. So patuloy tayo manalangin. By the way, we we have a, a midweek uh, survey, uh, prior meeting by the way. Uh, online po yun. So kung mayroon kayong time na yun sa group natin, RCC group. So pwede kayong mag-participate sa ating online prior meeting. Naroon yung mga listahan ng mga prior concerns natin. So, patuloy natin panalangin. And uh, napapasalamat si, on behalf of Jake uh, Thomas na nasa Apayaw ngayon. Uh, papasalamat siya dahil sa tinulong natin na, na financial or financial uh, help natin sa kanya. And uh, he is so uh, thankful and appreciative doon sa na ibigay natin sa kanya. And uh, okay naman siya roon. Pagamat lately na Uh, parang nagkaroon ng mistaken identity na parang siya ay identified with uh, PA, uh, NPA. So, patuloy natin panalangin siya. Eh, hindi naman mukhang NPA. <laughs> uh, so, uh, in, in, sa Apayo kasi, in, in, uh, NPA infested yan eh. So, 
uh, kaya sama natin siya sa prayers. So may work siya roon sa isang non uh, organization NGO uh, in- non-government non-government organization and while working while well, he's working there uh that naroon naroon yung design na tumulong sa mga churches. So pagpray natin na yung kanang involvement sa mga church sa church ngayon ay magiging uh, magiging fruitful and uh, yung kanang influence do sa church na yun, sa pastor na kanang kaibigan. So yun po ang ating patuloy na isama sa panalangin at pagkawin natin si uh, Douglas Calasicas dahil positive shot and uh, sa biyaya ng Diyos ayun sa kanyang text sa akin kagabi ay okay naman. Uh, wala na yung fever and uh, medyo ang hirap lang talaga dahil tuloy-tuloy yung ubo dahil sobrang katin ng lalamunan at yun pala yung effect ng COVID-19. Kaya mga kapatid, dublin ingat. Okay? Sabi nga ni Magalong, uh, pinapalu- okay, uh, medyo maluwag na tayo pero huwag niyong i- ibaba ang inyong guard. Ibig sabihin, na- naroon pa rin yung ating pag-iingat, dublin pag-iingat, dahil hindi natin alam. Marami na, may nasawin na sa atin part dito sa Baguio City, I think 14 or 12. Uh, karamihan ay mga medyo may mga underlying uh, dis- uh, sicknesses. So, pag-pray natin na uh, sana ay God willing sa biyaya ng Diyos in His time ay magkaroon na ng vaccine ng uh, COVID-19. So, manalangin po tayo. Samahan niyo po ako sa panalangin. Tumayo ulit tayo. Dakilang Diyos, kami po napapasalamat muli sa oras na ito. Thank you for the message that we have heard through Pastor Mike. Thank you for uh, your work. Indeed, your work is uh, alive and still speaking to us today. And nalangin namin o Diyos na pagpalaan niyo ang salita na aming narinig at sa mga kaibigan namin na nakapakinig, nakapanood sa Facebook. Maraming hindi pa sila magandang palataya na way abutin niyo po sila ng inyong biyaya na sila'y makakilala sa Panginoong Iso Kristo, na sila'y sumampalataya na si Kristo lamang ang kayang makapagliligtas sa kanilang kalagayang spiritual at naway tumingin sila, sumampalataya na si Jesus lamang ang tanging daan tungo sa Ama. Salamat po sa bawat isa na narito sa iglesia ito. Thank you for your blessing to us, for your sustaining grace na hanggang sa oras na ito ay patuloy niyo kami iniingatan. And thank you for your love and your mercy, O Lord, that though we are still sinners, yet your... Uh, your grace is abundant and uh, you are always there to forgive us, to cleanse us, not because of who we are, but only because of your son Jesus and what he has done on the cross for our sins. And so we thank you, Lord, for the message, for the gospel of salvation. Continue to help us as a church to strengthen our faith, O Lord, that we may grow spiritually. That we may have, uh, that we may have uh, a hunger for holiness, for love, for joy in serving you, in giving our lives to you, because you deserve our praises. You are our Creator, and we are just creatures and limited of ilalim sa iyong kapangyarihan. And Lord, we thank you for saving us. Continue to bless this church, use this church for your glory, O Lord, that many people would be saved and come to a saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I pagpalain niyo po ang bawat pamilya na nire-represent ng aming iglesia. Thank you also for our visitors sa buhay ni Kuya Scott, ni Ate Amelie, ni Daniel, na inyo pong iningatan na kahit ng uh, August ay nung nakaraang buwan ay sila po ay nagkasakit lahat at ngunit sa inyong biyaya sila po ay gumaling sila po ay nakarecover and salamat Panginoon sa inyong patuloy na pag-iingat sa kanila at salamat na aming nakasama sila ngayon sa iglesia ito salamat po sa aming uh, sa bawat isa na narito sa pamilya na nire-represent ng iglesia ito and uh, sa aming mga regular attender Ganon din sa mga tagapanood namin sa Facebook, alam niyo po ang kanilang buhay kung sino sila. Patuloy po kayong kumilos, mangusap, pagpalaan niyo po sila. 
at naway patulis lang lumago sa kanilang uh, pagmamahal, pagsunod sa aming Panginoong Isokristo. Dahil siya lamang ang aming tagapagligtas. Pagpalain niyo po, Panginoon, ang bawat isa. Ito po ang aming kahilingan sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Magandang tanghali po sa inyo. At uh, tayo po ikakain na. So, sino po mag-volunteer na mag-pray for our food? Uh, gusto ko marinig yung boses ni Cyrus. So, si Cyrus yung mag-pray sa ating sa food. <laughs> Lord, thank you so much for all the blessings you've given us to, to uh, this day. Thank you so much for uh, time you've given to us to be together, Lord. Um, Lord, thank you so much for the food that we're going to eat uh, for this day and the blessing you continue to give us to this day and to our family. Please keep us safe to this day forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Magandatanghali po yung mga visitor natin. Huwag nating palabasin. Uh, Pagkailangan yung pangtuan. Bye. 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 Bye.